Yeah, I know. This is going to be a great interview. I would not be surprised if we filled the stream up. Are you going to listen? Awesome. Oh, look, I gotta go. Let's hang out after the show. Super, bye. Dennis, there you are. There are some things I need to go over with you to make this interview with Princess Celestia perfect. Well, no offense, Twilight, but I have been doing this show for a while now, so I think I know how to treat a VIP guest. So you can relax, okay? I know, but I think I know a little bit more about the princess than you do. <sighs> All right. What do I need to know before interviewing the princess? Well, first off, you are to address her as Her Royal Highness. Remember, proper dictation is key when addressing royalty. Um, kinda knew that already, but okay. Second, I went through your list of questions and thought that most of them were off-topic with what the citizens of Equestria need to hear. Luckily, I was able to make a new list of approved questions with some conversation-starting topics. Fine, let's take a let's take a look at what you got here. What do you think of this year's economic boom in Canterlot resulting from cider sales? How can we prevent changing the tax in the future? Alternative defenses to Paris sprites? Twilight, these questions are boring. My talk show isn't about politics. It's not some kind of open forum here. These questions are going to put my audience to sleep quicker than Fluttershy's Hush Now song. She wants to hear questions that apply to everybody, not just this economic, political jibber-jabber. Right. Tell me, how long have you been Princess Celestia's student, hmm? Well, there was that one time, you know, when when we did the thing in the place. Not at all, actually. And just what do you have planned for this interview? I've heard your show in the past, and I must say that the way you handle yourself on this program gives me great concern to- Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Pinkie Pie, what on earth are you doing? Duh, I'm testing the party cannon, of course. Honestly, Dennis, how can you not have a big interview with the princess without a party cannon? Pinkie Pie, you can't go shooting off a party cannon during an interview with the princess. I hate to say this, but Twilight's right, Pinkie. Thank you, Dennis. Clearly this interview calls for two party cannons, not one. What? Are you crazy? You can't shoot off two cannons in front of a princess. You're absolutely right, Twilight. What was I thinking? You can't shoot off two party cannons in front of Princess Celestia. Of course I am right. Seriously, how do you expect to get anywhere in radio if you go shooting off- Better make it three. Celestia isn't just any pony. She needs super duper extra special treatment. I'll go get the other cannon. <laughs> oh, that Pinkie Pie. She's so random. I think this is going to be an awesome interview. Don't you, Twilight? Twilight? Hello, Twilight? Right. Awesome. <laughs> okay, looks like it's showtime. Uh, you want to come? I... I'll stay back here. All right, see yourself. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. They gave him a radio show. From the Jack and Joan Stratter Studio in beautiful CCM at the University of Cincinnati, it's the Dennis Daniel Show. Tonight's guest, voice actress Nicole Oliver. And we read the winning letter of the Letters to Celestia contest to Princess Celestia. And your announcer, me, Belle Dandy. And now, here's your host. He is the 2011 BearCast Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Mr. Dennis Daniel. <laughs> gentle coats and bronies of all ages you have tuned in to the greatest pony related talk show in bearcast radio history i am talking of course of the dennis daniels show i am your host the brony of bearcast radio 
and the Lifetime Achievement Award winner for 2011, Dennis Daniel. <laughs> Phillies and General Coats, Unicronies, Pegasus Sisters, I invite you to join us for this wonderful interview where we interview the leader of Equestria, the queen of the ponies, Princess Celestia. I'm going to stop talking like that because it's kind of weird. That's right, folks. Tonight on The Dennis Daniels Show, we have voice actress Nicole Oliver. Now, for those of you who don't know who Nicole Oliver is, she is best known as the leader of all ponies around the world, Princess Celestia from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Aside from Princess Celestia, she's also known as Mei Lin from the popular Card Captors, Ling Ling and Lung Lung from Ranma One Half, and Tokiko Mima from the popular Key, The Metal Idol. And folks, I'm excited because we are going to read the winning letter in our Letters to Celestia contest to the Queen of the Ponies herself later on in this program. What makes Nicole Oliver so great? Is it because she voices a rainbow pony? Is it because she voices a pony with little flowers on her butt? Or is it because she's simply an awesome voice actress? Well, whatever the reason, Nicole Oliver has become a mainstay in the My Little Pony universe with voicing Princess Celestia. So, that being said, I have made a little demo reel, if you will, featuring some of her best-known roles. So let's take a quick look at what makes Nicole Oliver so incredible. We know can stay in China. Not when big sister in disgrace. That's why we come back Japan. To get revenge on one what embarrass her. We wait for Shampoo get married, but she never do. So we come and make sure Ranma keep promise whether he want to marry big sister or not. Even in China, we hear rumor of Ranma many fiancé. So we thinking maybe if we get rid of other fiancé, he marry only one what is left. Big sister shampoo. Now you only one what is left. Other ones before this was too, too easy. We beat them before they realize we attack, remember? <laughs> Good. Check this out, Lee. I found the most perfect cake for us. Uh, that's a wedding cake, Maylin. Exactly. We get the best marks in class if we pull this off. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna go buy some more ingredients and try again. <laughs> Maylin, get back here and clean up. No, you won't. You may have made it impossible for Shining Armor to perform his spell, but now that you have so foolishly revealed your true self, I can protect my subjects from you. Let's quiet down, please. We have a very important lesson to get to. Thank you. Today, we are going to be talking about cutie marks. Boring. You can all see my cutie mark, can't you? Like all ponies, I wasn't born with a cutie mark. My blank was blank. Aww, she's so precious. Then one day, when I was about your age, I woke up to find that a cutie mark had appeared. Look at her hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, but honestly, that's how every pony was wearing their mane back then. I had decided to become a teacher, and the flowers symbolized my hope that I could help my future students bloom if I nurtured them with knowledge. So as you can see, Nicole Oliver is an incredible voice actress who has blazed the trail for many a pony to learn from. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. My guest tonight is a very popular voice actress, best known as Princess Celestia and Miss Chara Lee from the very popular My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. You can also catch her in the new Lifetime original movie, Taken Back, which airs August 11th. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I give you the queen of all ponies, your princess and my princess, Nicole Oliver! Miss Oliver, thank you, and welcome to The Dennis Daniels Show. Hi. Wow. I feel like I should be in London at the Olympics giving a royal wave from the balcony or a motorcade or something with that introduction. Well, we have thank to give you. you the most royal introduction, my princess. <laughs> my princess, yes. Not quite a queen. Not quite a queen. <laughs> You're still in there. I appreciate you doing this interview with us. Of course, My Little Pony is a phenomenon circling the world, just like the Olympics. And people have been saying, Dennis, you have to get the queen of all the ponies on your program. And I'm like, 
Okay, get out of my face. We'll get. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. So anyway, uh, what got you interested in voice acting? Well, um, you know, I went to, actually went to university to be an actor, and I studied over in England. There's another tie. Uh, I studied acting at uh, Oxford uh, at a summer program through the British American Drama Academy. And I just have always performed since I was a little kid. I started out as a ballet dancer, and I sang, and I just, well, actually, I was a really... I was a naughty little mimic when I was a little girl. There was a while there where I only spoke in an English accent or a French accent. I drove my parents bonkers. So kind of put all that together, and uh, working on camera is a lot of fun. But someone said to me, hey, you've got an interesting voice. Have you thought about voiceover work? That someone actually was my mentor, an actor in um, Toronto, who I admire very much. And um, I took up her advice and started pursuing it. Many, many moons ago, or perhaps many suns ago, and uh, here we are today. So it's, it's a natural extension, I think, of being an actress or an actor, um, but it sure is fun. Doesn't sound too unfamiliar to the same path that Kathy Westlock took, who was on our show earlier in February. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things in our business just kind of it seemed to they seem to happen randomly but you know things you kind of stumble across things and if you're given an opportunity and i think it's in any business or any any endeavor in life if a door opens you should really walk through it and give it a shot so um how do you prepare to audition for a role that you're auditioning for for on camera or for voice let's do voice just because it's a voice acting talk show sure yeah well for voice sometimes we're fortunate enough to actually get pictures of what these characters may look like so we kind of can peer into the head of the creator and see what they're kind of thinking about but other times we just get sounds like Kristen Stewart or sounds like um, you know Bugs Bunny or they give you kind of references of who you should check out this is kind of the sound they're liking for a character and then really I just kind of sit in my I have a great office and I shut the door so I don't scare my children or the cats and uh, I just start playing around you know, with all my voices and talk to myself, and it's great. <laughs> it's very freeing. I know. Isn't it wonderful talking to yourself? Yeah, it's great, and not being put away for it either. It's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I'm I not know. crazy. I totally know. One of your best-known current roles is, of course, Princess Celestia and Miss Cherily from the very popular My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, which you can catch every weekend on The Hub. Uh, what is it like working on the show, and what do you think of both of your characters? Um, well, it's an amazing show to be a part of. I really feel honored and, um, I mean, for any job I do, I, I don't take any of it for granted. I feel really blessed to be able to do what I want to do for a living as opposed to what I have to do. Um, but when it comes to both the characters, I love them both. They're similar in that they're mentor figures, they're leaders. Um, hopefully they're inspiring. But I think what I like most about Miss Cheerily is she gets to be a lot more of a goofball than Celestia does. And I, I think that's closer to my personality, so I really do enjoy, I enjoy voicing both of them, but um, it was sure fun in, in season two, especially when I drank the love potion and got to be all schmoopy doopy doop doopy with uh, Big Mac, so those yep. are great moments. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, that guy's voice actor, he must just must laugh going in that studio. All you gotta normally do is say, uh, yep. You know, it it's a job where you get to work with a bunch of other insanely talented people, all the way from the writers and the creators and the engineers down to the other actors, you know, I'm really blessed to work with and it is as much fun as it sounds. It's it's just it is it's great. No matter how great the day may be, once I've done a recording session for my little pony, I've got a huge smile on my face. Well, in a world with chaos and disarray like there is nowadays, there's something like My Little Pony coming along that just makes everything better and makes us realize that some of the greatest lessons we can learn in life are ones that we learned when we were children. And it doesn't hurt to relearn those lessons. No, I think over the years being a parent myself, how we parent has changed. And in some ways, I think we don't want to be seen to be like the big autocrats. Like we view our past parents as being these, these harsh dis disciplinarians. But those lessons, those rules about kindness and you know, treat people how you want to be treated. And, um, you know, I think there's no uh, there's no kind of stale date on when you can keep spreading that good word and that goodwill. And and I love shows like this. There's been lots of shows. I remember watching 
um, uh, Lilith's House on the Prairie when I was growing up, you know, and and other shows that were quite wholesome, but that that taught you some great values. And and yeah, there's lots of chaos out there. So, man, I would rather expose my kids and my friends and myself to positivity than negativity any day. Oh, can't be helped. Can't be helped. And so anyway, um, what do you think of the popularity that My Little Pony has generated, especially outside its target audience of little children, ranging into young teens to young adults? I think it's amazing. I mean, uh, I don't think we live in a time where just because something is pink means it has to be for a girl. Um, you know, or just because something is all about athletics and sports, it has to be for a boy. So if this show has resonated, and it has resonated with such a wide spectrum of people, I just think it's a credit to everybody that works on the show, that there's a real sensitivity and, and a real willingness to, you know, embrace a larger audience. And, and My Little Pony has something for everybody, um, and, and that's rare and, and something to be celebrated for sure. Oh, definitely. I mean, when I first saw this, I was like, uh, I don't know, great, another Little Pony cartoon. But then I actually watched the first two episodes of season one, I'm like, wow, this is actually not bad. Well, there's great backstories, right? So if you liked anything like any sort of fantasy novels or Dungeons and Dragons, or you just like reading in general where you like a good backstory but it's about their characters, this, this show comes in with such a richness of, of who the characters are and what they stand for and why they're there and and really paints a, a lovely picture of, of what Canterlot is and what, what the surrounding environment is all about. And, and there's a depth there. And the way it's drawn, it's just beautiful. I mean, I, I think anyway, I've had a pl- you know, privilege to work on quite a few cartoons. But the animation, the style of animation is breathtaking. And I think you, when you put it all together, it's just a really enticing package. I mean, I saw the uh, Generation 1 and, and 2, and it just mm-hmm. it just seems so fluffy and cute and pink and pretty. and yeah. But I watched this, you know, there's aspects of Slapstick and, and Samuel Beckett, Theater of the Absurd. Mm-hmm. And you have real storyline, stuff that applies to our daily lives. Whether it's trying to find out who we are, like the Cutie Mark Crusaders are. Whether we're trying to be accepted by high society and the click like rarities trying or just trying to get that special someone in your life like spike is there's something that my little pony friendship is magic that has to offer for everyone Mm -hmm. and you learn that you don't have to be a certain age to learn a little bit about yourself as you travel through this crazy pony filled world we call life i think one of the greatest things that you know has been said to me and is when you stop learning well, you die, but, you know, when you stop learning, you really do yourself an injustice. And, you know, just because school ends doesn't mean there's lessons to be learned, that there's adventures to be had, and that there's challenges to overcome. And I think it's a great a, a great kind of motto to walk by, to understand, you know, like I was saying earlier, um, if a door is open, walk through it. My parents, uh, my dad's passed now, but... My parents, um, when I was going to be a lawyer, and then I decided to be an actor. And my dad was running a big company, and he looked at me and he said, "You know, the worst thing you could ever say is what would have happened if." And I'm, so I'm that's not how, too well. you know, so that's how I've kind of tried to lead my life, along with with a little bit of grace, and to treat people how I'd like to be treated. And and the fact that I think. Uh, my Little Pony embraces some of those stories and a whole bunch of other ones. It's it's just it's really great. Great morals, great stories, great tales, great proddings to have in your everyday life. It's simply just great. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll agree with you. <laughs> BearCastRadio.com, this is the Dennis Daniel Show. We've got Nicole Oliver, best known as Princess Celestia, from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Now, I know that you're currently working on season three of the series. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect this upcoming season? No, I would be put out to pasture. <laughs> <laughs> literally pun intended um it's it's fantastic i mean you know i had a blast uh recording the episodes i cannot wait to see your reactions the fans reactions to some of the goings on and um it's just more of the same and i just think the writing is amazing it's super strong the characters are further developed 
and um, it's not going to disappoint. I can guarantee you that. I mean, I saw one of the uh, clips for the trailer, and Spike sings. You know, when we talked with Kathy in February about this, she she didn't even know she would get a chance to sing. Now she gets a chance to sing. Well, given it, it's, ba- it's backup <laughs> singing, but it's still singing nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, well... You know, we uh, part of the fun with everything, not just this show, but all shows, is is you don't want to spoil it, you know. And there's, and because we're such a dialed in, tuned in, linked in world, it's so easy just to to leak stuff. But um, there's so few surprises in life, so I think it's really great that that uh, we can provide opportunities for our for our, our our fans and for people who enjoy the show to be surprised week after week. So. Um, I'm keeping a tight lip. I'm not telling you anything. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so, we'll put a sound clip in there. And and if those of you who don't like this show, well, we got the girl that can see a one-way ticket straight to the moon. <laughs> That's a, a running joke on the internet. Yeah. A lot of things are a running joke with Princess Celestia on the internet, but we're not going to talk about that because they get kind of weird. Yeah. No, so yeah. anyway, let's talk about this new movie you're in. It's mm-hmm. uh, Taken Back, and it airs on Lifetime, television for women on August 11th and Movie Central on September 19th, 2012, well, this year. So tell us, tell us a bit more about this Taken Back. It's a heartbreaking story, actually. It's about a woman played by Moira Kelly, who, for voice acting, she voiced Nala in The Lion King. Um, but uh, her daughter is abducted from her when, she's, uh, when the daughter's three years old. And um, this woman, Karen, never stops. Uh, looking for her daughter to the point where she becomes a photographer and starts going into the high schools 10, 12 years, taking pictures, just hoping one day her daughter will show up in front of her and she'll see her and she'll know who she is. Well, one day that happens, and it turns out her daughter was abducted by a wealthy couple about 50 miles from where they lived. And I play Karen's best friend, and we um, we get her daughter back. We take her back. And... Uh, it's it's thrilling. Um, Amanda Tapping is also in the movie. She's a really dear friend of mine. Uh, she's probably best known for Stargate or Sanctuary, if you like any of those shows. Um, so it, it, it's a great story about family, about loss, about friendship, some real you know, themes that may sound familiar, about <laughs> overcoming <laughs> odds and about not giving up. Well, it sounds like a delightful show, and people can catch it on Lifetime, I believe, here in the United States on August 11th? Yes, and I have a big fight scene in it. It's awesome. It was so much fun to do. So, yeah, you have to watch it for sure. Nicole Oliver has played by the rules all her life. Now she takes vengeance into her own hands in Taken Back next Sunday on Lifetime. Not bad. Well, we could have done the well, Tonight on Biography, the story of Nicole Oliver, how doing Princess Celeste, she have finally pushed her over the edge and decided to <laughs> kick some female butt in the hit movie Taken Back here on Lifetime Network on August 11th on Biography on A&E. Thank not you. bad. Thank not you. bad. Thank you. Anyway, you know, Nicole, you seem like such an awesome person. And, man, I really wish I could come and meet you. I just wish that there was some way that I could actually meet you in person and, and uh, not only you in person, but other other people who like my same interests in My Little Pony. If only there was a way that we could do that. Well, there is. What? I'm, yeah, I'm allowed to leak it out. I am a surprise guest at Everfree Northwest on Saturday, the 18th of August, one day only. I will be there all day and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it to, to meeting up with the fans and to walking around and, and seeing all the art exhibits and, and, and all the drawings and the, the products that, that, that uh, so many um, fans have, have created so I will be in Seattle on the 18th of August for just that one day at Everfree and well, then I will be at Canterlot Gardens in uh, Ohio in September hmm, You're going to be in Nick, near Nick of the Woods but wow, mm-hmm. wow, Seattle mm-hmm. near the end of the month? Wow, I think that's going to have to call for a... Uh... Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds exciting. <laughs> that was that Twilight. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't have any Daniel Bryan. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, okay, now we got that joke out of the way. When we come back, 
we're going to answer some of your listener questions and read the winning letter in the Letters to Celestia contest. You are listening to the Royal Interview on The Dennis Daniel Show. Hey everybody, this is Ash Ketchum from the town of Pallet. While I'm training to become the world's greatest Pokemon master, Pikachu and I like to listen to the All Taste Explosion with the Boogaloo Shrimp featuring John Pokemon and the Dennis Daniel Show. And we are back here on the Dennis Daniels Show. We have voice actress Nicole Oliver on the air, best known as Princess Celestia, and Miss Charlie from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. And we're going to read some of your listener questions. Our first question is from Timely Tardis Logo. What was the hardest thing when you started out doing voice acting? Oh, learning to let go and not judge myself. So in other words, I don't know if you know, like you feel sometimes when you're doing things, you almost like you get that little person on your shoulder going, that's really terrible. You suck. That's awful. And so probably one of the hardest things was just uh, going, uh, no, you're wrong, be quiet, and, and just overcome that kind of a little bit of insecurity, which is only natural, especially when you're starting out. So, um, yeah, just letting yourself go and, and allowing yourself to have fun and not worry about being judged. Yeah. It's really tough because you're always your own worst critic, and you might yeah. think that something is really bad when in reality it's not. Now, I wish the same could be said about this talk show, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm terrible, aren't I? Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How in the world did we ever fill up the stream in this station? <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. anyway... From Dasher, first, I just want to thank you for being such a great voice actress and voicing Princess Celestia. My question for you is, do you have any advice for a new voice actor just starting out? And also, could you suggest a good microphone for recording? And if you can't, I have a possible recommendation. Um, well, I think a couple of things. If you want to be a voice actor, you need to, to take a look, really do your research about what's out there, what type of cartoon shows are being made, what sort of voices they're using. And there's so many out there now because of all these different cable stations and everything. So that, that's the first thing. Do your homework. Um, and then get into a class. Uh, most major, major centers do have some sort of an acting school um, where there are voice classes, or if, if you're in, um, you know, Los Angeles or New York or Chicago or anywhere where there's uh, like a SAG office or something or an after office, which are the two uh, unions in the states that represent actors, you maybe go in, you know, and take a look on their. Um, sometimes they have bulletin boards or on their website of classes offered and coaches offered, and 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 see if you can get in and start working with someone. Um, because you know you need to, you need to work your voices. You you can't keep them in your head. You got to get them out there. You got to speak out loud, and it's always good to get some feedback from other people. In terms of a microphone, I'm not super super technical, but I like a Neumann. I like the Neumann mics, but they're pretty pricey. Uh, AKGs aren't bad, but um, yeah. I find that a very good microphone just for beginning voicing is the uh, Blue Yeti. Okay. That's right, the Yeti. It is the most advanced and versatile multi-pattern USB microphone available right now. It combines three capsules for four different pattern settings and is the ultimate tool for the amazing recordings that we recorded on our show, including the little skit we did, which I'd like to thank Melee Princess for helping us do. That was a lot of fun, and, uh, I, th- and I thought the party cannons would be a lot of fun to have as well. Cool. Anyway, our next question comes from... Sifty Spearmint. Okay. Will there be any Celestia backstories or episodes even? Because Luna got her own episode, so it is only fair if Celestia also gets one. P.S. Your voice acting is fantastic. Oh, thank you. And I can't tell you. <laughs> um, you'll have to watch season three, won't you? I guess they're going to have to. What better way to find out if Princess Celestia, the pony ruler of Equestria... We'll get ever get us backstory. Find out tonight on biography. Ru- <laughs> hashtag running joke. Anyway, our next question is from Milleron. As you probably know, Fanon has interpreted Celestia in many different ways. How do you personally view Celestia's character? 
Oh, boy. Um, well, kind of like whenever you play any sort of a character, you, I mean, I try to embody it. You, you try and put as much of yourself into it. And, and when you can find some similarities between who you are and, and the character, for me, that helps me get into it. Um, so rephrase the question again for me, Dennis. What do you think of... What do, you, what do you personally think of Celestia's character as this grand ruler of Equestria, watching over all the ponies and bronies and fillies and unicronies and <laughs> unicronies? Yeah, I mean, that uh, I mean, it's it's a pretty daunting task. Um, you know, she's quite. Uh, I do enjoy when the odd time you get to see a, I guess not a chink in her armor, but you get to see a little bit more of who she really is because she does put on the role a bit sometimes because that's part of being the princess, right? It's part of, of, of allowing opportunities for the, for the ponies to experience things so they can learn and grow and, and become better ponies. Um, yeah, I mean, I love her character. I, I find her very, I mean, it's, certainly I'm nowhere near that regal in, in real life. I'm a huge klutz. So it's kind of fun to play someone who's who's quite white and perfect and and with with a unicorn and and lovely rainbow wings. So it's uh, it's it's very pretty. It's very soft. It's very strong. How's that? Hey, you know what they say? Rainbow hair. Don't care. <laughs> okay, I know now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, before we go, we have to, we actually have a cool thing. And hey, I want to get I want to get regal for this. Okay. 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 My dear princess, we have had 200 letters from your followers enter our mailbox as part of the Letters to Celestia contest. And through all those letters, we have learned many lessons about friendship as their stories have grown and grown. We present to you a letter from one of your faithful students, the one that was the letter among letters. I don't know. Pretty good? I'm pretty good. Anyway. It's lovely. It's lovely. Dear Princess Celestia, I hope this letter reaches you without incident as I am currently writing it from the middle of the ocean. Though I'm sure that you have had many opportunities to visit the ocean, I wanted to write you about a lesson in friendship that these seas have taught me. When I look out across the waves, most of the time all that I see is nothing but endless water, and it seems like I'm the only one out there. I think that's the way a lot of ponies feel when they look at themselves, like they're all alone in a big empty world. When I climb up on the mast and search beyond what I can see down on the deck, I realize that I'm anything but alone. Friendship can't be approached like waiting for two ships to pass each other by chance. You have to be willing to take the time and effort to go out and look for new friends. If all you're doing is waiting for some pony to come and find you, you might miss out on all the wonderful things that friendship brings. Who knows? Your next best friend might be just over the horizon looking for a new friend, too. Your faithful student, Stormy Seas. Oh, that's wonderful. And that was the winner of our Letters to Celestia contest. We had over 200 letters submitted wow. just to have one letter read to you on this interview. That's fantastic. Well, that's a lot like what I was saying, right? If, if a door is open, you need to walk through it, not stand and wish or think what would happen if. That's what Stormy Seas was saying is, is take some risks and, 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 and not be afraid. Don't let fear prevent you from experiencing life before we go i i, I feel the right to end it with a letter that i wrote and this okay. is this is my i know this is this is my personal view on everything that has gone on through this contest okay dear princess celestia i have learned that the brony population in my world is one of the most awe-inspiring and motivating group of individuals that i have come across while there are many different ponies that make up this wonderful world it's those key differences that make us united in our love of friendship The world is scary at times, and no one can predict where tomorrow will take you. But I am truly blessed to know that there are people out there who share the same ideals and beliefs that I do that don't fear being judged or ridiculed for said beliefs. If being a fan of the series is immature and juvenile, then I guess being a fan of doing the right thing, being faithful to your friends and family, and trying to do your very best at everything you do are all immature and infantile ideas that today's adult world has seemed to cast aside for selfish and self-serving reasons. These people are not ones to be exiled in today's fast-paced society, but serve as a reminder that mankind is never too old to rediscover what makes us eternally young at heart and teaches us that there is no age requirement to learn the lessons that Twilight Sparkle and your other students have learned through their own life experiences. I think I speak for the brony population when I say that your students have taught us all about accepting ourselves for who we are 
and not what others try to make us out to be. And I think that if any pony can master that lesson, then they have learned the grandest lesson of all, the lesson of life. I hope that my show has served a purpose to give hope to those who want to pursue a career in voice acting while entertaining them along the journey. And with that being said, I will take those lessons and continue to pursue my dream of being one of the world's greatest radio personalities. Your faithful student and the cult of personality, Dennis Daniel. I love it, Dennis. Bravo. That's great. Well, I, I try my best. Of course, I'm no Twilight <laughs> Sparkle. <laughs> well, anyway... Nicole, thank you so much for being on this awesome show. I, I consider it a truly huge honor to have the queen of all ponydom on my program. And guys, check out Taken Back, airing on Lifetime Network next Saturday, August 11th. And be sure to stay tuned to The Hub for Season 3 of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Nicole, thank you so much for for being on the program. It was a truly huge honor, and I hope in the near future we can have you back on once again. Absolutely. It'd be my honor. And this is the Dennis Daniels Show. And until next time, have a safe trip to the moon, haters. <laughs>